Magazine, the youngest driver in the whole field is Max Verstappen. The Dutchman is 16 years old. Uh, rookie and uh, yes, uh, standing on pole at the third race here in Hockenheim. Not bad. Here he is. Hello, my name is Max Verstappen. I drive for Van Amersfoort Racing and I'm 16 years old. Um, of course, I started in karting like many did. Uh, I started when I was four. And uh, yeah, my first official race when, was when I was seven, and uh, yeah, after that was consistently growing, of course, and until I was in the international world, and uh, last year I became world champion. First of all, my father, of course, but after that, um, at the moment, that's Alonso, because I think at the moment he doesn't have the best car. But he's the barriers from there, there's not many places on the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit you can do that. Max Verstappen for Fun Amersfoort, passing Jordan King for fifth place. Outside of Esteban Ocon, road goes in Blanco's favour here. It's still wheel to wheel, but he doesn't have the traction in the tight corner. And onto the Wellington straight, Ocon just gets his nose back in front for second spot. Antonio Fuoco with the lead just from Esteban Ocon. The yellow car, Tom Blanquist, then Max Verstappen and Nicholas Latifi right there. Ed Jones. Him. Esteban Ocon under pressure. Max Verstappen with him now. The Van Amersfoort Racing Drivers Weekend going from disaster in the first race to being very competitive by the third. That's the sort of progress you want in a weekend. Hopefully without the disaster. Tucks to the inside. Great move by Verstappen up into second place. First row, perfect start as well, it would be for them. Good start from Felix uh, Rosenkreis, scanning a spot from P4, moving straight up to P3, nice and slick. Well, for all his qualifying prowess, as the lights go out, Esteban Ocon rather fluffs the start. Good getaway from Tom Blomqvist and also on row two from Verstappen. Down towards the first corner. And Blomqvist has the lead, Ocon... Heading wide in an attempt to avoid a crash, everybody staying safe. Ocon then leading the 26 cars through Eau Rouge for the first time this weekend. An amazing sight. Ocon followed by tw number 25, Antonio Forgi and Max Verstappen in the frame. Onto the camel straight. Again, spectacular slipstreaming maneuvers. Ocon not able to defend P1 at the end of the straight. Last lap, car 30, Max Verstappen and Lucas Auer in the three car fighting for victory on the camel straight. The Austrian is using the slipstream to attack Verstappen with the Dutchman defending P1 with great vigor. Check this out. Terrific action. It's far too deep into the corner, does Verstappen. Runs wide over the curb. Menezes has got away by about three lengths. It's going to be Ocon second as they plunge downhill for the first time now. Down towards Eau Rouge. And Gustavo Menezes has made a very good start. And he's been helped straight away by that battle between Ocon and Verstappen for second. Heading down towards La Source as way wide goes Rosenfist as they come up Radion for the first time. Now they're heading towards Le Combe, but it was at Le Combe where it all kicked off on lap one of race one, and it may well do again. Ocon, Verstappen, they trade places. Verstappen goes second as they come into Le Combe, and Nezis breaks a fraction too late, and there is drama there. Look, there's a car off on the inside, cars scatter everywhere. We'll piece that together in a moment, because a sum of run wide, there was one that went to the barriers on the inside of the approach to Le Combe. But up front, coming down towards Brussel, Menezes drops to third. He got it wrong slightly coming into Lincoln. That compromised him on the way out. And so now Verstappen and Ocon have gone first and second. And Gustavo It's Calderon, eighth at the end of lap one, which is an absolutely great look at this battle, though, now. Verstappen versus Ocon, they weave around as one defends and one attacks. And there's a challenge being made as well against Toril. Lucas Auer trying to get the place back. Toril had got ahead of him. 
and just as expected, there are some tremendous battles raging on. Now, Verstappen is having to go defensive here to keep... He's behind at the moment, but now he's in the slipstream. The toe should work now, heading up towards Le Combe. He goes to the outside, and is Jake Dennis close enough? He's Ocon close enough to Verstappen. Tries the outside, tries the inside. Verstappen, as he did in race one, squeezes. He breaks late. Ocon breaks as late as he dares as well. There's no change in the order, but that was Ocon's best chance in the draft from the restart, heading uphill. Menezes is still with him in third place as well. And what's happened behind cars all running together as they come over the line. So, end of that one. Normal service is resumed, Ocon leads the way, but he's having to defend. Brian Meisner runs second, but Stappen is third, then it's Sorales, Menezes, and look at this, up the inside, Rosenquist goes ahead of Guimaraes, Lucas Aub tries to follow him through. To no avail, the Austrian has to stay behind the Brazilian as they come downhill. Jake Dennis gets himself ahead there of Hector Hurst, that's a change for 12th place. Only the top 10 score points, that's the first target for everybody. Up Radion they come. Now Rosenquist is ahead of Guimaraes, but Guimaraes fights back. Look, he's in the toe, and look at this for the race lead. Ocon versus Brian Meisner versus Serralis. Verstappen is in the mix as well, and Menezes tries to join in. Verstappen round the outside. Brilliant move, brilliant. Verstappen leads. Ocon tries to fight back, but he can't do it. Max Verstappen from third to first, heading into Le Combe. Now, can he do the triple this weekend? Ocon tries to fight back as they head downhill. Brian Meisner is third, then it's Serralis. With that damage, it's going to be easy pickings, I'm afraid. Ocon to the outside, wheel to wheel with Verstappen, they touch. Verstappen hangs on to the advantage, though. We've seen this season just how brave a driver Verstappen is, and he really uses all of that bravery around here to excel. So Ocon out front, and Verstappen now attacking Rosenquist for second place. He goes the long way round the outside to the hairpin and moves up. Rosenquist now down to third place. He's got the orange car of his teammate Lucas Auer breathing down his neck. It's by through turn four. Now for the lead, Max Verstappen seeming to be unstoppable. Again dives to the inside. Ocon tries to counter-attack, but runs out of room to put a traction down. And it seems as though the Volkswagen... Max Verstappen, again the dominant force on the streets of Nuremberg, managed to pull away quite comfortably from his opponents, opening up a big gap over Esteban Ocon and Jordan King, another strong race and a fantastic winning streak he's on now. He heads to the chequered flag, win number three at the Norris Ring, a complete sweep at Spa and at the Norris Ring. Remarkable performance, six in a row, a double hat-trick. All the F3 cars last year in anticipation of a visit to Macau where he finished in 10th place and he's quicker than that result would suggest as well. A problem at the start of the race. Now, Max Verstappen there, number 30, in the Van Amersfoort car, the Dutch run car, breathing down the neck of Jake Dennis. Two talented young rookies here going absolutely full on in this battle for fifth position. And here comes Verstappen around the outside. He's got his nose in front. Look at this. It's another audacious move from Verstappen. Is he going to run out of road, though? It's a left-hander coming up. He's going to keep his foot in. Jack Dennis, he's not going to let this come easily. It's going to be absolutely wheel-to-wheel. -wheel. Is it going to the left-hander? But what a move from Verstappen. That was fantastic. Jake Dennis did everything he could to make that hard. But it was fair. He gave him enough room. And that was good driving from both of them. But Verstappen... Again, continuing this theme of just pulling off moves where you shouldn't be able to overtake. Around the outside there, around a quick driver like Jake Dennis. Fantastic battle, and <laughs> here we go again. Foco, the damaged car, still going in fourth place. Verstappen trying to come at him. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh together. This is great news for Lucas Auer. They had been catching Lucas, but of course now they've started fighting each other. He's got away from them again in third place. And Verstappen is now committed to the outside line. He's got his nose in front, bangs wheels, and, and that almost forces uh, Fuoco into Latifi, his teammate there. The two Prima cars go together, one goes out wide. Jake Dennis tries to come back at the inside. It wasn't long before Max Verstappen soon overtook Tom Blomqvist for third position. That's a good move from the Dutchman. Tom Blomqvist fighting back in two turns. Look how everybody is bunched up behind, all on their toes, ready to rejoin. Ocon weaving around, slow, slow, slow. And now gets himself in the right line and starts to accelerate down to the final corner. He'll cross the line with about 25 seconds, but Ferrucci is on the grass as some speed up earlier than others. Verstappen is ahead of Ocon into the last corner. He's run out wide. 
He tries to defend as they come across the line. Ocon is back ahead. They bang wheels virtually going down to turn one. Esteban Ocon is ahead once more. Verstappen round the outside. He's going to run wide. He runs off the circle. Blomqvist leads out. Fuoco has fallen back a bit. Jordan King is fourth ahead of Verstappen. And Verstappen is now making his move. Look up the inside as they go down towards turn one. In the background, Ferrucci is defending as well. But Verstappen is going to make a move, is he? Jake Dennis is defending as well. Out wide goes Fuoco. He defends from King. Verstappen now tries to go around the outside. And look at this for the lead. Lucas Auer, wheel to wheel with Tom Blomqvist, the Austrian driver. Fuoco. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that Fuoco's having to defend. Here was the uh, overtake. Good move, he left it as late as he dared, and fairness to Fuoco, he gave him racing room. Yes. Not much, but just enough, and it put both of them slightly.